now we start on the final 14 gates of Yesod, the gates of Nun. Now, this is perhaps the most significant gate uh, that forms Yesod. These gates of Yesod are all the components that create Yesod, that create the sentient self, okay? And this one, this is the water sign path, the path of Scorpio. It comes from Gebura to Yesod. And it, well, all, uh, well, <coughs> Tiferet, Yesod, and Malkuth, the three uh, Sephirot of the pillar of self, below Kether, are each given birth to by a water sign. We had the sign of Heth, the sign of Cancer, that gave birth to Tiferet, the, the uh, solitary self in the whole temporal realm. Okay. So now we have the sign of Scorpio gives birth to the sentient self. In other words, the solitary self gives birth to the sentient self, just like the supernal self gave birth to the solitary self. And then further on, the sentient self will give birth to the static self, of Malkuth, okay? So, this is a birthing process, and it is the final path, the final ingredient of Yesod. Okay. So now, Nun, the Hebrew word Nun, N-U-N, means fish. And... This is interesting symbolism right here. Fish number one means, stands for abundance, fertility, sustenance, okay? Fish in the ancient cultures especially was a vital a source of food, especially for these cultures that developed Kabbalah. Okay, that can develop the tree of life. So, <clears throat> now the fish and water. <laughs> the fish relates to the next water path, Pisces, that uh, path that gives birth to the to the static self from <clears throat> from excuse me from Hod to Malkuth is Pisces, which is of course the two fishes. So this path of none plays a big role in this later development. It's also related to the path of Aquarius from Netzach to Malkuth, it's the, it, it is, the, well, Aquarius is the water bearer. And who lives in the water other than the fish? So again, this is important symbolism for what follows, okay? Now, None. The path itself. What does this do? What change does this represent in the evolution of the I self realizing? It has come to the state of Gebura where it realizes each of the individual parts of the 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 I at this point in its self-realization realizes that it has 
its own unique character, its own unique power, its own unique gift that it gives to the cosmos, its own part to play in the whole cosmos. So the shift that it makes now as it descends into this being, this level of awareness that is able, capable of interacting with other. Because that's where, you know, the individuality is at. It is so unique in its own self that there is other in sharp contrast. So it must interact with other because that's all there is in the universe. Self and other. So this final ingredient is self-determination. The I realizes that it is, that each of its parts are autonomous, self-determining parts. And it is on that basis that I interacts with other. Okay? Is that making sense to you? <laughs> so that's Scorpio. You know, Scorpio, a scorpion has a stinger that is really awful. You get stung by a scorpion and you know it. Otherwise, they're really lovely creatures. There's nothing wrong with scorpions. They serve a function within their own uh, biosphere. They contribute to the cosmos just like you or I. But they have that sting. And you've got to be aware of that sting to avoid being stung by that sting. And that sting is self-determination. You know, I determine, I can determine to go with the flow or to not go with the flow. And that not going with the flow is the sting of the scorpion. You know, it changes things. It adds a whole new ingredient to experience, you know. I am now a creative force because I determine my course of action. Okay. Of course, within limits. The limits of other. The limits imposed by other. Okay? So, in my self-determining, I may be in conflict with other, you know? And that kind of goes against the grain, which is to always find balance with other. Okay? So, that's the scorpion. That's nun. That is what is now incorporated into the self that the I realizes at this stage. This stage in which it's progressing rapidly into physical manifestation. Into the realm where it is self and immediately other. Okay? It's all about self and other self and other, this interaction. And that is Yesa. That is the body that we are preparing, the sentient body that will be capable of interacting with other while maintaining its own, its very own uniqueness. Okay. So, our first three gates 
are the one linear gate of that path of none, a triangular gate which <clears throat> integrates the Kipura to Yesod with the <clears throat> Gejula to Yesod. It balances them out via the path of Aleph. And then there is a quadrangle which incorporates the, the solitary self of Tiferet and the whole thing together. Okay? So these are just the first three gates. So, <clears throat> from the universal perspective, we start in Gebura as the entire collective of solitary cells who have all realized their own specific power. And this is an incredibly powerful collective, totally empowered collective. And we pass down the path of none, all taking charge of our own power and ending up in Yesod, where we are prepared to interact with other. And then we rise back up the path of none to Gebura, okay? Now, from the collective sense, we learn how that self-determination, that factor of self-determination, changes everything. The power of all those parts determining their own course it just amplifies the power of the cosmos infinitely, <laughs> okay? So we learn about the power, the true power of self-determination for the whole, okay? On a personal level, we start as our own fully empowered solitary self. We know our place in the universe, we offer it to the collective, and we travel down the path of none and take charge of our power within the collective and offer it up to the whole collective in Yesod as we begin this process of interaction, this creative interaction with other. And we are fully self-determined individuals in the cosmos. We take full responsibility for the consequences of our actions in relation to other. And then we pass back up that path and we let go of that self-determination to return to our uh, just place of power, of unique individual power. Okay. So, we learn from this the power of self-determination and the responsibility implied by self-determination. Okay? So, that's the first path, the first gate. The second gate is from Gebura down the path of Nun into Yesod, up the path of Lamed to Gejula, along the path of Aleph with the flow over to Gebura. Okay? And then we go back 
against the flow to Aleph of Aleph to Gajula, down that path of Lamed, the equilibrator, <laughs> into Yesod, and then up that path <clears throat> of Nun to Gebura. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what this does is it unites from the universal perspective that that <clears throat> statement of self, self-determination, the power of that self-determination is united with the balancing power of the collective in Yesod. And it's united by Aleph, that continuum between the collective and the individual. Let's put it all in context of, again, the collective nature of the cosmos in that that integration of the individualized power and the, uh, the collective power, the collective guidance for that power. And as the individuals all take self-determination, it's always within the context of the collective. Okay? whether we as humans realize it or not. <laughs> it all impacts the collective. So, and from a personal perspective, it's again putting it in context, in combining and mixing the two aspects of self, these two urges, the urge to merge and the urge to maintain our individuality. We're combining it all in Yesar, where we are powerful in our agreement. Let's put it that way. Now, the third gate, we come from <clears throat> Gebura, down the path of Nun to, to Yesod, up the path of Lamet to Gedula, up the path of Leo to Tiferet, down the path of Virgo to Gebura, okay? And then back around, all right. Now, you know, obviously, from both the universal and the personal perspective, this is integrating all of this dynamic, all of this di development into the... Uh, from the solitary self into the sentient self, into the context of Tiferet, okay? It's the whole process. The only thing missing here is Resh, but that is encompassed. It is included in its being, so to speak. <clears throat> okay? So, those are the first three, and there are 14 in total, so there will be another three uh, videos on these particular gates. All right, till then, till the next time, bye-bye.